Hello, everyone, and welcome to week 20 of MSK Unknown Case Series. I'm excited about this case because this is a fantastic high yield case. Uh, we have two views of the right shoulder. This is a patient coming in uh, to the ED with acute right shoulder pain. And I really love this case because this was a case that I actually missed when I was a second year radiology resident when I was taking calls. So I think this is uh, a very pertinent case for residents and even those who are in practice. So let's take a look at this case. And the question that I have for you is which ligament or ligaments are torn? Is it the inferior glenohumeral ligament, the inferior glenohumeral and acromioclavicular ligaments, the acromioclavicular and corticoclavicular ligaments, or the acromioclavicular and corticohumeral ligaments? Which ligament or ligaments are torn here? Give you a second to take a look at this image. And this, of course, is a grade three acromioclavicular joint injury with tearing of the acromioclavicular and coracoclavicular ligaments. Now, in a busy ED, when you're looking at the shoulder, it's tempting to realize that, you know, the glenohumeral joint is intact. There's no fracture here. There's no dislocation. Normal study, move on. But this is a very serious injury, obviously. And it can be, if you're going fast, you may miss this. But notice that the clavicle is superiorly elevated. And the distance between the acromioclavicular interval is elevated and the distance at the coracoclavicular interval is elevated, right? So if the AC interval measures more than six millimeters, as it does in this case, that means that the AC ligament is torn. And that's at least a grade two injury. And if the coracoclavicular interval is elevated or increased, and that's the distance between the tip of the coracoid process to the undersurface of the clavicle, if that measures more than 14 millimeters, then you know that the coracoclavicular ligament is ruptured and you have at least a grade three injury or a grade three, you know, grade three tear of the acromioclavicular ligament. So this is a grade three injury of the AC joint where the AC and CC ligaments are ruptured. Okay, so a nice case, even though there's no fracture, this is a very, uh, a serious injury. So this is an AC joint injury. This often presents with acute pain. P patients come in with pain around their shoulder. It's common in contact sports such as rugby and football. And there is a Rockwood classification of AC joint injury that divides this injury into six different types that we're gonna talk about right now. So a type one is you're not gonna ever make that diagnosis on radiography because the, it's, it's, it's normal on x-ray. The AC ligament is sprained but not torn. On an MRI, you can see that there's maybe thickening and heterogeneous signal within the AC ligament suggesting a type one injury, but you would never call a type one injury on an x-ray. A type two, you definitely can tell. You, you can certainly call that. That's when the AC ligament is torn, but the coracoclavicular ligament is relatively intact. It's sprained. It's not torn, but it's sprained. And that AC interval measures more than six millimeters. And depending on who you read, that number can be different, but I like to use six millimeters. So obviously if you're you know, reading Shaquille O'Neal's x-ray, it's not gonna be six millimeters. It's gonna be more than that, right? Cause he's a very big individual. However, if, you know, for most people, I think six millimeters works overall. A type three is when, like in the case that I showed you, that's when the AC and the CC ligament are torn. So you have superior displacement of the clavicle. Often the AC interval is more than six millimeters and the CC interval between the coracoid process of the scapula and the clavicle is more than 14 millimeters, right? So that's a type three injury. So most commonly you're gonna see type two and type three and that's what you're gonna call on radiography. Type four, five, and six are very rare, but they can occur. So a type four is when the AC and the CC ligaments are torn, but there's posterior displacement of the clavicle into the trapezius. And often an axillary view is helpful to diagnose a type four type of injury. Again, rare. Type five is also rare. That's when the AC and the CC ligament are torn. It's sort of an exaggerated type three when you know the, the clavicle goes so far superiorly all the way up to the subcutaneous tissue. So sort of think of a type five as an exaggerated type three where the clavicle goes markedly superiorly into the uh, subcutaneous tissues. And then a type six is when, again, the AC and the CC ligaments are torn, but instead of the clavicle going superiorly, it goes inferiorly. So that's also pretty rare. Uh, we don't see that that often. So typically you're gonna see a type two and a type three. Now, often sometimes you can do, if you're not sure if there's an AC ligament injury, you can do, you know, you can image the contralateral side. So often you can do an AP of both AC joints in one image. And that's often helpful to delineate whether, you know, one side is torn or not. And I think that I find that to be very helpful. The literature also talks about, you know, holding weights like 15 pound weights on your wrists and that can accentuate the injury. That's often not necessary because we can make the diagnosis on a standard AP image. So I hope that was helpful. That's a nice, this is a nice example of an AC joint injury. Tune in next week for another super high yield MSK unknown case. Thank you so much for your attention.